facilities workshop. Dr. Pace. Good afternoon, board members. Mr. Clinch and the team have a packed agenda as usual for our facilities update. And I'm just going to turn them over so that we can get this going because it's standing between you and food that our CTE students are preparing <laughs> at 5 o'clock. Jay's already seen it. Thank you, Dr. Pace. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the board, good afternoon. This is the facilities workshop. We'll be updating you on three projects, uh, starting with Michigan Ave Elementary School. I'll turn it over to my director, uh, Mr. Mark Lockard. Good, good afternoon. Uh, we've got Song Associates with us today and good Clancy afternoon. Thays. And uh, John, do you want to sure. go ahead uh, and start off? Yeah, I'll move that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Well, good afternoon. Yeah, we're very excited to have Michigan Avenue actually getting off the ground. So the project goals are basically the ones that we've presented in the past, but it's a 946 student elementary school and uh, has the shared uh, dining building and construction has actually started on the early works package and this is a view of the uh, front of the school with the parent drop off and you can see the main building and uh, the, the main new building and the uh, shared uh, multi-purpose and dining building there to the to the left and that's a bird's eye view and you can see building three there in the back and you can see the bus uh, drop off there in the back and the parent loop there in the front so that gives you an overall um, visual uh, view of the school uh, looking at the site plan uh, the yellow buildings are the new ones the orange building is building three which is a renovation uh, the purple is, uh, the, the smaller purple one is the uh, covered play area. Uh, the very, very small purple one is the uh, top lot area. And then the uh, larger purple one is the central energy plant. You can see the bus drop off there to the, to the right of that and the parent drop off uh, to the left of building two. Why do I do you see two purple buildings? Uh, there's a very tiny one there in the courtyard. This is uh, the uh, covered play. This is the tot lot, and this is the CEP. That's a, okay, okay, okay. I, I thought we had three central energy plants. Okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> not, not going to do that. Well, you said purple, uh, so I said yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it's being built, so it'll take care of the uh, middle I'll, school eventually. I'll yeah. say I'm not colorblind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll. Turn it over to our construction partner here, and um, go ahead and go so, into that part. Uh, so where we are currently in the schedule is we've actually received all of our subcontractor bids. Uh, we've vetted them out, um, and we've actually formulated our GMP and have submitted it uh, to the district for review and approval. Uh, so we're going through that process right now, uh, obviously hoping for board approval at the next board meeting. On the 20th, I believe, uh, is the board meeting, if I'm not mistaken, is the one that we're shooting for, with an NTP coming the following week. Uh, so it feels like we're on track for that. I think. Uh, what do you anticipate the GMP? GMP? The GMP has been submitted. Okay. And uh, it's been going through review right now. We've made a few little tweaks to it. Um, and I think it's coming up for approval, or coming to you for approval. From, not sure. The so we're completing that package now, which includes our cost per student station plan to ensure that we achieve our maximum cost per student station per floor statute 1013.64, which became effective last July. It's, it, it's critical, it's paramount that we do not exceed the cost per student station per that floor statute. It's the law. What is the cost per student station? For this school? particular project, uh, while well, you, you use just, the, just under 20, the year of uh, uh, January that you'll hit your substantial, which is $22,627. 627 times 946. So we're looking at a GMP of under $20 million. I think now, it's because of portions of this project include middle school amenities as well. So those will be prorated out. Okay. So that for we're here, we're showing design. just the cost right. okay. for the elementary school. Because right. I got elementary GMP based on your numbers at twenty one thousand four hundred five one forty two. Right. The, the GMP is, GMP is uh, twenty twenty four seven approximately. Uh, course, the, but that's a lot of site work it, and the shared. And it includes the offsite road work as well. Does that so include the real estate purchase? I no. don't know. It doesn't. No, we we own all the property today. Okay. 
I think our goal that we, we have to hit, uh, Mark, is 22977, which is January of 2019, which is the uh, first month of the year that the school will, will be open. So it's a little, the numbers are slightly better uh, if you if you multiply it out. When did you say the opening was going to be? January of 19. Uh, you you used the That's substantial the, for the, for the uh, of January for the year that you will achieve that substantial for okay. your cost okay. station. Yeah, it'll be in August of that year, but we use the first month Got of that it. calendar year. Thank you. So as you heard, uh, we are in the first phase in what we call 1A, and I apologize for the strange number. We should have probably just went 1, 2, 3. But uh, <laughs> anyway, so it's 1A. Um, we are actually in the process of creating the new cover play area along with some yeah. Uh, sure. basically also the athletic courts that are going to go back in the back area so those are actually going to be built so they're not throwaway costs and also so the district or the school wouldn't be without those for an extended period of time so that is, should be completed by the uh, uh, next couple weeks along with some deep storm yeah we did have some deep storm drainage that had to go in as well with the part of that process and that will be completed in the next couple weeks uh, at leading right into the main part of the project so we're looking at the main part of the project starting uh, February 27th thereabouts uh, with a completion in February 2019 for what we're going to call buildings one and two uh, that would then allow the uh, district to move in over the spring break into the new facility then at that point we would begin the second phase of the, or the last phase of the project which will be the demolition of the existing building renovations to building three at that point along with the construction of the new bus loop in the back and some fields etc that go in the back side of the campus and then that will all be completed by august uh, prior to the students returning to school you said february of 19. february 19 for, for the first the, two for the ter first two buildings right yeah. Uh, this is the update kind of as you if you will for the early works package that's going on you can see we're looking to be completed uh, there about around the 15th 16th of February so yeah, only a week or so away from that but we're getting close Just a couple pictures of what's going on and then a little bit about kind of what will happen during the bid process to give you kind of an update on that we did have about uh, a little over 600 uh, invitations that went out. Um, we had a, over, a little over 200 that had confirmed that they were going to give us pricing. And we received right around 200 uh, bids. Actually, it was just under 200 uh, bids. We actually had it was 196 bids that we actually received, which is very good on a project. Um, you guys have gotten great participation, I believe, in the last couple projects here within the district. And, I think it's because you guys are kind of getting out of the normal school schedule, which is allowing subcontractors to be very interested in your project and also being fairly aggressive on their pricing as well. Uh, we saw some really good pricing coming in on this project. So I feel really good about that. Okay, well, great. Thank you, Mr. Cutrone. Thank you, Mr. Zecker. Thank you, Appreciate the update. Yeah. So, well, uh, Philip Donovan, our architect with Little, is making his way to the table. Uh, we'll give you an update on the Neo City. Can I have a clicker, please? Thank you. So the first uh, part that we want to talk to you about is year one, uh, and that's for the first 125 students that will be freshmen only for the fall of 2018. So we've reviewed several options uh, for the year one campus that includes the minor league facility, Council on Aging, and the portable campus all would have required some level of build out uh, in addition uh, to the portables uh, the, the, the portable campus that would have required bringing in utilities roads sidewalks etc so rather than placing students in trailers uh, the school district is, is considering permanent buildings located at gateway high school ninth grade center and as you can see from the uh, slide the ninth grade center is completely separated from the Gateway High School campus proper so we can have full separation. Uh, this option provides several positive factors including permanent buildings. It avoids uh, our concerns for storm evacuation and other safety concerns if we were to put the students in a portable campus. Science labs and other amenities already exist at this location and the buildings are in very are in excellent condition. Uh, we have designated parent and bus loops. Uh, complete separation from Gateway High School, as I mentioned, close proximity to Neo City. 
It's actually our intention to stage a bus there so that students can go back and forth to Neo City as their research on opportunities. Um, and, and Mr. Meachin's agreed to take a CDL course. <laughs> what, about, what about food service? <laughs> grab the bus back we we <laughs> will continue to we'll use the, the food <laughs> cantina. <laughs> I don't see why I don't have to. <laughs> And we uh, reviewed the campus again last Friday to determine where we would place that food trailer. So we're looking at various options so they wouldn't be on how the we would they do that. In the gateway. They would not be. Um, Eating up the Gateway Cafeteria. No, sir. No, I've got to that ask was Dr. never. I got a Dr. Pace question, and I, I think this is a great idea. But what and Mr. Meacham, what keeps Principal A and Principal B from recruiting the Neo City and IB kids to and from each other's campuses? And I'm not suggesting they shouldn't. I like healthy competition. But when you've got them on that campus and you've got two very impactful <coughs> academic programs for basically highly motivated students, what, explain how that happens. I believe we have enough smart children in Osceola County to go around to fill all of our high rigorous academic programs. And if you look at what the two programs are offering, they're very, very different in terms of their experience. Yes, they both have that academic rigor, but one is much more about international mindedness, a very global com competition and, not, and thought philosophy behind it as well as the academic rigor, where the other is truly the STEM focus with the academic rigor. So two very, very different kids, two very, very different um, principles underneath neat that. They'll start at completely different times. We'd already said that Neo City would operate on more of a business day as opposed to our traditional high school day. So, you know, we're looking at an 8.30, 9 o'clock start as opposed to the 7.10 start. So really no overlap in terms of drop off, pick up, all of those types of things. So I really feel like it can work. And I was not kidding about having a bus there so that we can make sure the students, even in year one, have exposure to the great work that's being done in the research center at Bridge, even though we won't be able to walk across the street. But at the same time, you know, we'll, we'll work towards making that opportunity available. Okay, and, I'm, uh, and again, I think it's a good problem to have. But right. I want and keep in mind as well that Gateway is losing students because of the opening of Tehoka Kalaga High School. And we really did not want to move the portables from the Gateway campus that are there because of the fact that we will use them in a year from now based on that renovation project. Understand. Understand. So we really felt like it was just, it just made sense. Portables are going to be there. We can keep them in good use for some of the Gateway students while taking this ninth grade center and repurposing it okay. for New City. Great, thank you. So this this approach would save um, you know a lot of setup and, and operational uh, costs versus yeah. the portable yeah. campus, and it would provide a much more positive atmosphere for the students. Sure. Uh, so we continue to solidify FF&E needs for year one. Uh, we completed uh, several meetings with the core stakeholders and procurement, so we continue to work through that process. And just last week, we were able to meet with Steelcase uh, and had a very uh, productive session with them. So we are applying for a grant that uh, would provide assistance up to $67,000, 30 students, one classroom. Uh, the grant provides installation training and evaluation as well. There are four active learning classroom options that are provided by Steelcase, a flexible uh, that encourages full participation across many modes. Sound supports multiple simultaneous activities. Makerspace encourages exploration and problem solving and personalize, uh, prioritizes large and small groups uh, to work together and a great option for individual work as well. So in addition, Steelcase offers a pilot. So we are considering piloting, if we get the grant, uh, that would take care of one of those active learning modes and looking at bringing in another two of those active learning modes through a pilot so that we could try out essentially three of them and then keep in mind that we have many flex spaces that will be designed within our school so essentially we could try all four of those active learning components so that when we get to the ultimate FF&E for the permanent building, we will truly net know what it is that we want for that school. In addition, Steelcase offers a active learning ecosystem workshop. That's two and a half hours for teachers to teach them how to use that furniture specifically. And they have offered site tours. Uh, Flagler Schools is heavily invested in Steelcase, so that's an option as well as visiting the Steelcase plant. Uh, so with that, uh, I'll turn it over to Mr. Philip Donovan, our architect with Little Architect, 
who will um, provide us an update on the design for the permanent school. Mr. Clinch, Dr. Pace, and board members of our first meeting, uh, but I'm looking forward to a great relationship as we move forward. Um, so just wanted to uh, briefly touch on the key project criteria, which you outlaid, and uh, we're responding to STEM curriculum based on 500 student stations, 45,000 gross square feet, built around three um, um, courses or tracks, engineering, biomedical, and cybersecurity. And so this is what we've spent about the last 10 weeks building with the core curriculum uh, stakeholders. It's, <coughs> it's uh, designed to be a highly immersive learning environment, so it's based on flexibility. Um, as students move through the different tracks, there'll be flexibility, overlap of spaces, and so we're trying to make those things um, um, adaptable within the school and then scalable. So concepts, key concepts that we pull out um, or we design into this could be scalable across the district or prototypical. Um, it's designed to also be a high performance zero energy building facility. So the, um, the, the way that that begins to create influence is it reduces energy costs, reduces maintenance time and costs, and creates happier, healthier learning spaces. So we, we're plugged into operations, we're plugged into maintenance and facilities, um, and getting key feedback from all of the core stakeholder groups. So, so if you're applying to be LEED certified, what level LEED would this be um, when you're done? And I'm not suggesting we should apply for it, but I'm just curious the standard you're building to. We've, so we're building to, to certify, we're, we're taking pieces, it's, I'm not, I'm uh, trying to be quoted. It's pieces of the different um, um, uh, piece uh, programs like LEED. So we've had a, uh, two in the past that have ended up at a LEED Platinum level, but we obviously don't um, public, pay public education facility. Yes, they don't pay. We don't pay for that certification. Right, 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 right. Or there's things that um, you would just pay extra cost to get there. But there's also pieces of components of the well building standard which um, is a new standard that the USGBC puts out, um, that which is who puts out LEED. Mm -hmm. That begins to talk about the occupants in the building. Those kind of elements reduce absenteeism in students and teachers. So those are things that concepts we're bringing in, um, as well as living building and living futures. So dealing with zero energy and um, the minimal impact on site and to the end user. So um, we're, we're targeting all this within $10 million construction costs. So um, it's all about trade-offs. It's about working um, to understand how people use the space and how the different building components so come together. So with that $10 million budget, is, is, would, this, would this, if we applied for it, be a bronze, a silver? Or what, 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 what do you think it would be? Let's guess. It, it's really not a goal to, to achieve uh, a sustainable uh, rating system right, per no, se. I, right. Now the Florida statute uh, 2575.255 requires that we meet a sustainable rating system but basically the the team polices themselves in order to achieve that. It's not a third-party verification so really the thought is instead of spending all those additional dollars to get that no, plaque, I would, not, I would not. rather put that toward in the classroom. I would never recommend us applying for lead certification. <laughs> but, but we will achieve a minimum certification le level, whether it's, it's LEED, uh, Green Globes, Florida Green Building Coalition, or the WELL certification yeah. that, that Philip talked about. It's hard to answer because there's, uh, there's things that you're just paying for extra either during construction. And right. so... The bike rack. Right. So right. those are things yeah. where, you know, we could get to silver or gold, but it's just added dollars that aren't you're not getting any, anything out of it. So... Um, and, and the fact that it's high performance isn't all extra cost. As Phil yeah. mentioned, it, there's trade-offs by having a really tight envelope, much tighter than we would have in conventional construction, what we're doing now at Topolaga High School, for example. You can reduce your HVAC needs, which reduces your your cost for construction, you know, tremendously. Mm -hmm. Both electrical That's and it. mechanical costs go down. I just want to so remind you, we, we do need to try to wrap this up by five o'clock. Sure. So let's kind so of keep let's going. Kind of keep I've got a very quick question, so Dr. Pace. I like this thing where it's going to reduce absenteeism and all that. If we're going to spend money on these things, which I'm fine with, are we going to have some methods to track it so we can say, yes, yes. this worked or no, it Yes, didn't. so we're going to be doing um, evaluations pre and post. Um, so as Dr. Meech uh, begins to hire his staff, we'll, we'll target those. So quickly, design drivers that shook out of the first kickoff meeting on December 13th. Uh, this was with all of the stakeholders, so immersive learning environment, high performance building facility, the microcosm of bridge, so the collaboration with, the, with them, UCF, 
um, an EUI of 20, so really ultra low energy use, which then begins to um, reduce your maintenance and energy costs and create a culture of innovation, creativity, and problem solving. Um, schedule, these are key schedule milestones. So we achieved a space plan approval with the core um, curriculum stakeholders on the 30th of January. Schematic design is due this Friday. Design development is on track for April uh, with 100% construction documents it's issued uh, July 6th, and then we're looking at a 100% GMP with our construction partner on the uh, 31st of August. And targeting, um, we will hit the first day of school in August of 2019. Um, a couple of key points from this schedule is we had our kickoff on the 13th of December. Over the past, it's, it's been about six weeks now, we've had seven meetings. So we've had very, very good input and uh, collaboration with the core curriculum stakeholders, the core facility stakeholders, um, and we achieved space plan approval. And again, we're looking at the schematic design package this Friday. Um, quick overview of Neo City. If you haven't seen it in a while, the red box is our school site. So, um, so Build Back Boulevard is off here to the right, uh, and and our school is right at the the point where the road bends, <laughs> Neo City Way bends. So that shows both phases of our two buildings. Um, our, right now we're targeting the upper left hand corner of the site. It faces northeast about 37 degrees off of True North and we're working out the conditions of bus drop off, parent drop off and parking. Um, so how does that shake out? We've begun to work through immersive learning diagrams with, uh, with the site, master planning the entire site uh, for second building. Um, program, again, 45,000 square feet, 500 kids, 25 to 1 student-teacher ratio, about 125 kids per grade, focused around the three engineering-based specialties, engineering, biomedical engineering, and cybersecurity. Uh, so we've done a lot of brainstorming. We've had a lot of, we've met almost once a week with the stakeholders, and we've come down to a decision on scheme two, and it's a balance between the immersive learning environments and the building as a functional tool for reducing energy and maintenance, um, and how do we implement those immersive learning environments. So a lots of flexibility, as I said. Um, and then the initial phase um, and layout on site. So um, some of the portions of the building swing south um, to adjust to uh, the solar day and solar year. And we're, you can see we're beginning to master plan for a second building. Okay, well, great. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Okay, so uh, we'll ask our Bill School AA team to join us at the table. Uh, Shankle Schultz, Architects, and Core Construction. Come on up. Come on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know where that came from. Sorry about that, Moss and Associates. I apologize. Good afternoon. Oh, um, you get the younger version. Yeah. <laughs> Smarter. It's more handsome versus new and improved. Um, <laughs> so just to recap the uh, project goals and objectives, again, these are things we've already kind of addressed previously, but um, the reuse of the previous prototypes, we've made some refinements over the years to kind of address those needs. Uh, we have a bike path connection between the high school and the middle school. Uh, we also providing the additional practice field that was requested for the high school. Uh, and then the exterior design is going to have a unique character that relates back to Harmony High School. Uh, the site plan, and again, this is just a recap of what we've already presented. Nothing has changed since the last the middle. Again, you can see the middle school and the, uh, the, the tan boxes, the high school is to the left. And we have the bike path connection and the additional practice field that I mentioned before. So all still the same thing that we've, we've presented in the past. Um, the ele elevations exterior renderings are still the same, again, from what we presented before. Um, the color palette is very similar to what we have at Harmony High School. Uh, we incorporated some entry canopies, uh, some things that make it its own sort of unique design and character to the building. Uh, but the overall aesthetic is very similar to what you have directly next door to the existing high school. Uh, this is the existing uh, courtyard, looking at building one, again, the academic building. Building two, uh, the gymnasium building, again, very similar color paddles, uh, painted a tilt wall with some form liner and reveals, and there's a, a, a canopy system that connects the entire campus between the two buildings. Uh, the last rendering is the north elevation of building two, uh, the gymnasium building, that has the lab spaces as well. Again, the same similar color palette, painted tilt wall construction with some form liners and some reveals. Again, nothing new. This is kind of a recap of, of where we are with, with the overall exterior. 
Um, the status of the Army Corps um, permitting process, where we are right now, the first step is to get uh, South Florida Water Management District um, permit in hand. Once that is in hand, then the Army Corps permit follows um, typically about 30 days after that. All of the technical and engineering aspects of that permitting process are in place right now. So uh, we're currently in the process of responding to some legal uh, back and forth between the school district and, and South Florida Water Management. So that's what, what is going on with the start date? Is it, this, this, I mean, because we were pretty adamant that we kind of want to stay up to speed on that several of these meetings ago. And I thought, I thought the Army Corps was the issue. Is it now South Florida? Well, before they issue the Army Corps permit, we have to receive South Florida Water Management permit. They won't they won't approve it until we have that in hand. But didn't we have this conversation that it wasn't going to be the problem? We had this conversation at dawn. We, when yeah. we at the start so what, of the project, I guess I want to know what happened. At the start of the project, the, the real driver was the Army Corps permit because it could take up to a year. Mm -hmm. And we immediately met with the Corps and, you know, we were satisfied that they would move this along quickly. So yes, the current um, stalemate is with the South Florida Water Management District. We have submitted all the technical requirements, as Patrick has alluded to. Uh, just yesterday, we were advised uh, by through our environmental consultant that this is turning into a legal issue because of the mineral rights issue uh, that was called out in the agreement from the uh, Harmony community for the taking of that 100 acre uh, wetland mitigation area. And this started yesterday. Yeah. I guess my concern is, if, well, if it started yesterday, if it takes 30 days to get the Army Corps, we could have started February anyway. And we were, yeah, we, we well, were in January. We were, we were we just were, to be clear, a construction notice to proceed has already been issued. The contract has been issued to Moss and Associates. They are currently working through the upfront administration for the project, shop drawing submittals, and what we had always contended throughout the, this, the course of this project, that the schedule uh, would show, always showed us going to construction no later than March 20th. Yep. So that is what we are still trying to achieve. What's the likelihood that we do that? Uh, up until yesterday, I was very confident that we would be able to beat that date. Uh, we were led to believe that once we got through South Florida, uh, which their review took place last week, that we were, uh, the indication was provided that we, we would be advancing that permit to the Army Corps this week. Rather, this week we were notified by our environmental consultant that the South Florida Water Management District has legal concerns as a result of the for mineral, mineral rights. For mineral, where does the South Florida Water Management District get into mineral rights? I have a right. meeting set up for Monday down at the South Florida Water Management District. Oh, uh, this so sounds like I'm something else be in front going of you on. Yeah. on the uh, David and uh, I'm right. concerned that what we've got is a lower level bureaucrat lawyer looking at it or somebody going mineral rights etc and they just jump to the conclusion that there's an issue yeah i can tell you there's many properties in central and yep. eastern and southern osceola county where the current owner does not own the mineral rights and so i who's stopping it is there someone besides south florida is the development or the developer yeah. part of this Strictly at all? south florida, Strictly 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 south florida so i want to ask them you know guys what's the real hang up here because it's not a realistic one in my opinion but worse comes to worse we go and we get them vacated. If we found gold, gold the, uh, the state would probably take it anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, so the, that that's the issue, is that this land is being put into a perpetual conservation easement. When we did the title insurance, came back, I spoke to Martin and, and Rhonda. The first thing was, uh-oh, they identified mineral rights. And the one thing I do know about South Florida is they can Somebody can get hung up on an asterisk. Who has the mineral rights? Seminole Land no, Company? No, no. It, it's, uh, to be honest with you, Mike, I don't remember which entity owns them, but that's the other thing we're looking at. Could we just go to them and get it all released? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I went back to the title company people and said, give me who owns under this document. Is this entity or are the owners still around? And, and who are they and where are they, et cetera. So we're getting that. So we, last night we got hit with it, we jumped on it today. I think we'll get through it, it's just 
we got to. So if this is no Indian burial sites or anything like that, we got to worry about it. <laughs> no, it's gopher <laughs> tortoises. <laughs> we got those too. It's gophers coming up. Does this any of this go back? To the mitigation issues are all taken care of. Um, the only thing Swift Mud's raised, according to our people, is and our outside experts, is this mineral rights issue. It's the only thing they've come back on. But the last couple of meetings ago, when we had this, we had the whole issue of several different ways to do the mitigation. Right, and we proceeded that with done? the path that We've made not best. had any pushback on that issue. As of this We've point. negotiated all those mitigation credits. Right. So, so it's so just so a matter of so keeping this general. permit moving I'm forward. I'll see you okay. When do you expect an answer? Well, I'm going to try and get it resolved on the phone this week, but I set up a fail-safe meeting in person on Monday. I don't particularly want to drive down the swift mud, but the reality is if we don't get there, I want to go sit with the general counsel and say, wait a second. Where's our office? We've got West Palm. <laughs> so we'll be working it again tomorrow because we'll have more info on the phone with them. But, but one of the things is identifying who's really raising the issue with swift mud. That's cutting through and saying which person's actually put this on the table. Okay. All right, um, just to give a quick project update, um, since we've last met, uh, we've participated in getting all the contractual front, front end contractual requirements, the bonds and insurances, and started working on our uh, owner direct purchase orders. The Harmony uh, Middle School sign was installed. Um, and we've uh, awarded the major trade contracts, as you can see, started doing the CSIP and uh, subcontractor default insurance enrollment. Middle school AA. Middle school AA. <laughs> Not <laughs> quadruple F. <laughs> Middle school, Middle school AA. AA. Until further naming. Okay. Um, we've met with the tilt wall and the structural steel um, contractors to start looking at sequencing for the project and um, casting slabs. Uh, we have scheduled the groundbreaking ceremony for March 28th at 9.30. What are we going to do if we don't have a permit? Yeah. We're optimistic here. We're going to have a permit. Okay. Yeah, I like right. that. Um, continuing on, we've uh, got many RFIs and submittals underway from the major trade subcontractors. Schenkel Schultz has been doing an excellent job on processing those, so we've got a lot of that back already. Uh, we did do a uh, e-builder training again to do a follow-up session. Uh, this Thursday we have a Duke Energy meeting with um, uh, School District of Osceola County, Duke, our subcontractors Moss and the architect and engineers to go over temporary power requirements, permanent power, the transformers, any energy rebates that we can get back, site lighting, and the harmonics. Uh, we had a great facilities community meeting. Um, that on the 29th that Ricky uh, hosted. Uh, Thank you all for being there. I certainly didn't require you to, but I appreciate <laughs> you being there. Thank well, you. we offered to, to be there to support you guys, so thank you. Um, and we've started our regular OAC meeting, so we are having those uh, bi-monthly. And we've uh, got our BIM underway, so we've had about three meetings on that. So we are looking at trying to finalize our building information modeling and class coordination with the subcontractors by the uh, first first week of March, plus or minus, around there. Do you you to own the site ones? Uh, we're, we're going to look at that, yes. Yes, sir. Well, I'm not saying we do it all, but yeah, I mean, once you got them, you know, get, we, get we do that at a number of sites, and that, that works out pretty well. Okay. We don't have the, you know, bucket trucks and equipment to readily um, maintain those, and when you have an outage, uh, you know, the power company can be there quickly to mm -hmm. take care of that for you. There's, there's a light out there motivated to fix the light. No, I get it. <laughs> I get it. And then just an uh, update on project schedule. We've talked a little bit about permitting. Um, we've got go for tortoise uh, permit. Uh, we're starting to get that in place um, and anticipate mobilization once South Florida Water Management Permit. We can get into the upland areas and start demolition get up temporary fencing um, and the uh, silk fence and start getting power towards the trailers. Jay's kids are leaving for college. You can move the gopher towards <laughs> Yeah, they actually have to be relocated to a, a specific mitigation area. And, and they have to be taken 
uh, relocated by a trained professional. Wranglers. <laughs> well, we've scheduled a partnering, uh, partnering meeting, and what better day to spread the love than 214. <laughs> so that All meeting right. will be your bring, your, bring your friends <laughs> and lovers to the meeting 8 to 12. It's going to be at the Harmony Golf Preserve. Um, the session is going to include the school district, of course. All of our major uh, trades will be there. Um, we're going to have all the consultants, so we'll have Schenkel Schultz there. And you can see there's a little triangle there. It's hard to read, but it's if you see in the middle is partnering. There are mutual objectives, so we'll talk about how all of the objectives are the same, whether they're the subcontractors, the school district, we all need to get the school complete on time. It's not a triangle, it's a pyramid of success. <laughs> pyramid of success. There's continuous improvement, which that way we're always looking at ways we can make the project better. Um, a lot of times we can go with the subcontractors and offer up some things that will uh, save money or give you better quality along the way. And uh, problem resolution. It's construction. We know we're going to have problems. So what we're going to do is figure out right now the process to get to the resolution so that we're not waiting until the problem's right in our face. So we're looking real forward to this meeting. It was a great idea. As are we. Ted Robbins, what a secret. Mr. Chairman, that concludes our update. Thank you all. Does, does anybody from the board have any questions, comments, concerns? I would like uh, just kind of some email updates as, with the South Florida stuff. Yeah, me too. As this moves yeah. along, so we can know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah don't. I, I, I don't want to wait for the next facilities workshop to learn yeah. that we're uh, two months behind. Right. Mr. White. Uh, I can ask mine offline. I'll grab you real quick. Hopefully, I'll have it. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be back at 5 30. Don't forget to go visit with your CT friends.